Welcome to the Advanced Item Updater Detailed Instructions video. I'm going to go ahead and launch the Advanced Item Updater again from the Estimating tab. Now in the Detailed Instructions, we're just going to talk more specifically about what the Advanced Item Updater can actually do in detail. Um, generally speaking, Advanced Item Updater is going to be most useful for adding pricing. Again, uh, pricing is the most simple and easiest thing to do. However, there's other things that you can do with the advanced item updater. Um, one of those things would be to actually add new properties to certain items in plants with. So for example, let me go into the properties window for one of these area tools. We're going to click on advanced. Now, when I have the advanced properties window open, um, there's certain things going on here that we can actually look at. And we can see there's a lot of properties here on the left hand side in plants with advanced window. Now it certainly doesn't have every property and there's certain properties that I can include here that I may want to, to see. For example, the name of this office um, is the number of the room. If I want specifically to put that these room numbers are going to a property called room number, uh, I can do that really easily by adding in a new property for all of these areas. Okay. We're going to actually add a property called room number. So we're going to open up the updater and we're going to go ahead and enter a folder. And again, we want to go ahead and search for the offices and choose the estimating tab and click search. So we found 12 items and what we're going to do, because you can actually add properties, we're going to just type in the name of the property we want. Um, and actually we're going to type room number. Okay. So the room number is going to be set as a text. We're going to set that item or set that into the item group okay, here. Um, and we can set that here. The property formula will actually be equal to the name. Um, and that's because we already have the room number set in the name. So we're going to go ahead and hit update now. And it's going to update 12 items. Click OK. And we don't see any changes here just yet. If we double click to open the properties of one of these items, we can see in here that it actually put in the room number here and it put that into the formula. So that's what we wanted it to do. And um, for some reason, it checked that as an input value. That's okay. We're going to actually go fix that really quick. If we show the advanced settings, uh, for some reason, this box was checked here for input. Okay. Uh, the advanced settings, when, when you look at this in the advanced item updater, these correlate to the properties window for the property. So when I double click on the property of a property, I actually have options here to make this an input option, how to set the decimal units, um, make, you know, if this item is going to be hidden or locked. So that advanced, show advanced settings here in the advanced item updater, that correlates to these input options on the edit property window. So I'm going to just go ahead and uncheck input. I want to keep everything else the same and click update. All right. We'll click OK. And now we can go ahead and see. Uh, let's take a look again. That took the name off of the, the uh, form view, which is what I wanted. And I didn't want that to, to change. Now, because this is a formula, I may want to lock that down on all of those items. So again, I can go back to my updater. Um, check the box here to make that locked. So again, if I lock that down, it's going to lock that formula and I click update and it's now updated 12 items and you can see it it locked it right here for me on this one item here and it also locked that on all of the others now really quickly you'll notice if I go into the columns button I've actually already got a column created with the same name called room number and you can create your own by just clicking add a new column okay um, we're going to go ahead and just check the box here on the room number column that I've already created. And there we go. 
our room numbers are all listed out. And because we set the room numbers equal to the same name as the offices, they're right here in this new column. Um, what's great about that is I can combine room number with, with other things, you know. Um, if this was all on like the first floor or something like that, we could put that information in and that could equal um, like our location. So um, there's so many things that you can do with PlanSwift to edit and update things after the fact if you've already created them into a project and you need to make changes. So that's what the advanced settings can do. Um, and there's really no limit to, to what it will do. And again, going back to the original demo video, if you've already watched that, if you make a mistake and you, you update something that you didn't intend to do, you can always click on do, and that will change those updates of, of anything that you um, made a mistake on when you've un, uh, updated that. So just make sure that you know you click on do right after undoing that, or you may have to click on do several times to get back. And you can see now that I've hit undo, it's actually gone ahead and undone the locked property that I set the room number at. So if we want to redo that, let me go ahead and hit lock, click update, and watch what will happen. They're all going to go to yellow. The yellow on the spreadsheet indicates the lock property, and I've got that updated now on all 12 items. Um, a couple other things that you can do here in the detailed instructions is you can also update items in other locations besides the estimating tab. Now the estimating tab for PlanSwift is really specific towards the job information. So when I go into PlanSwift and I have information specific to a job, this is where I would want to change that information. If I wanted to change my global templates or anything that I have, let's say I have a whole bunch of parts um, in my assemblies and I may have drywall in eight or nine or twenty different assemblies, you can actually go into your templates tab and update things in here as well. So when I go in and start looking at different assemblies and so forth, for example, I have concrete slab assembly here, and I've got some other assemblies where I've got a concrete slab. Um, so I have the same kinds of parts in two different locations here. And I've got the price set, for example, at 110.40. Well, now I can go to the updater, and if I want to change that, very simple to do. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the name, copy that with control C, open the updater, paste that name in, and I want to actually change this search parameter to the name, click OK. And now I'm going to be searching in the, not the estimating tab, but I'm going to be searching in parts and assemblies for anything that has the concrete slab price per cubic yard. So we'll hit search. It's now going through and running the search on that tab. And it may take a while depending on how many items it actually has to search. So there's a lot of parts and assemblies here in the in this tab. So you can see my computer is, is running a search. It's finding all the items that would have a matching name. And again, it may take a minute or two. Hopefully it'll be wrapped up here in a moment. But it will tell me where those items are and when we've got them um, found. So right now, it's found three items total on this Parts and Assemblies tab. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go back to our property name, cost each. Oops. And we want to, actually we're going to sync that really quick. And we want to then type in cost each. So it's important to hit sync because syncing will sync the property type, the group, the input and output units. And what this means when I see that there's no formula here, it means that I may have uh, concrete in several different places with not all the same price. So there's two of them that I can see here right now. If we go to my parts um, and look, for example, at the material parts, And we're going to make everything think here. It's crushing my computer. Um, when we open up the parts, we're going to find that there's another concrete part that doesn't have a price. Okay. So 
I want to set the price right now, let's say at a new price of $115 a cubic yard. That's what I want to set. Very simple to do. Just type that in, click OK. It's going to now go through and update those three items. Three items were updated, and we'll click OK. So um, we can see now 138. And that 138 is actually the price total, which is the cost at 115 and the markup. Okay. So again, we've set that those properties. And let me again go and show you where the other concrete part is that we updated, which would be right here, my concrete slab, 115. And that one shows 115 because we don't have the markup set. All right. Now, if I want to go back and set the markup on all of them, really easy to do. I'm going to set them all to zero. So I'm going to just come back to my updater. I don't have to do anything except type in markup. Set the property formula to zero and click update. I've now updated three items. This one is still set at 115. If we look at the assemblies, those are 115 for the concrete. So not only can the advanced item updater update the job information on the estimating tab, you can also update the assemblies before you put them into the job. And so that's a real critical factor for what the updater can do. Um, so again, that's through your tabs here. When you go to select a tab, you would be choosing instead of the estimating tab, which is the job specific tab, you would be choosing any of the other tabs that you might have in your templates. And so you can go through, make choices here on whatever tabs that you've got created. Um, and again, if you need to add a property, you can do that by typing in a new name. You can then edit the properties, or you can also even delete a property here by checking the delete property box. That's the detailed part of using the updater. Uh, if you're not exactly sure of what you're doing with all the properties, the property types, and so forth, if you're not quite to that advanced level yet, uh, you may want to watch some of the level two webinars. Um, I actually teach the level two webinar for Plants with, and if you go to our help tab and click on the join a free webinar button you can go to the webinar tab let me just open up my chrome here and for whatever reason i was blocked out let's go look at the webinar schedule and again parts and assemblies they're always at 10 a.m on tuesdays and fridays mountain time and just click on the link to register it will go ahead and ask for your name last name email address um, but that's a quick way um, to learn more about the, the, the basic um, features here when you open up advanced and you're learning about new properties or adding properties it can be a lot of work um, especially if you've already created a lot of parts and assemblies and all of those parts and assemblies are missing just one property or missing a, a piece to the puzzle or you you've got to go in and make a formula change the advanced item updater can do all of those changes so much more quickly than you could having to go back to each individual item and making those updates. The updater can do it on multiple items at a time. And that's the beauty of the updater.